I run one event a year for men only. It's called the Builder Summit. This year is the fourth annual Builder Summit. It's in two months. It's not too late for you to register. Go to buildersummit.org, link in the description of this video. An excellent conference for men. Our theme this year is pursuing holiness. Go to that website, watch that promotional video, consider going. Any questions, you can email me at btwnnews at gmail.com. How are you today? I'm doing well, and uh, apparently I am on my way to hell, along with um, Justin Peters, Vody Balcom, Ray Comfort, Paul Washer, Todd Friel, John MacArthur, Chris Roseboro, Phil Johnson, and others. You probably don't know who this man is. Well, a lot of people do, but probably if, if you watch my YouTube channel and channels like mine, you probably don't know who he is, but he has a following. He has a large following on YouTube and he makes videos that are very long and he has anathematized myself along with these other men, these other men. They're all going to hell. Why is he saying that? I want to answer that question. I want to answer the question, who he is, who, who is he? And uh, why is he attacking myself and these other men? And um, the longer you watch this video, the more information you'll get from me on how I'm personally involved with each of these men. Um, and I'll be responding to one of Joshua's videos. Uh, his name is Joshua Chavez. His YouTube channel is Surveyus, Surveyus Christie, something like that. And he's been on YouTube for quite a while. And, uh, let me go and show you. This is one of his most recent videos, the death of discernment. Uh, it's eight and a half hours long. Now I need to, <laughs> how do you organize and make a video that's eight and a half hours long and expect, uh, people to watch it? People have watched it. Uh, 36,000 people have watched it. It's not one of his more popular videos. He has videos with much more viewership, but I'll be talking about this video and why, um, I'm part of that, and um, we'll all be talking about who he is and why he may be attacking. Uh, this is uh, an article written about him. Uh, Surveyus Christie imports bride, fakes marriage, and sends her back after consummation. We'll be talking about that as we go through. But first, um, let's go this way. This is his article uh, that goes along with that eight and a half hour video that uh, I showed you. And here are his comments about the men he's talking about, including yours truly. He says, this is precisely what is being dealt with here. Evil men and imposters. What is an imposter but one who has gone to great lengths to appear the exact opposite. So myself and all those men listed on the thumbnail, we are all imposters and evil men. He also writes, these men are plotters and schemers. They usher in destruction while claiming to stave it off, not unlike the deception seductions of Delilah, except in their case, as we just read, they are both deceiving and being deceived. So sure were the Pharisees of their righteousness and blasphemy of Jesus, as they thought, that they boiled with blinding hatred. Though they had knowledge of the word of God, they had no true knowledge of God, of, of the word. In his very name, they plotted and schemed against the express image of 
his person until they succeeded in putting him to death. Wow. That is, that is uh, John MacArthur, Vody Balcom, Paul Washer. All these men are deceivers, evil men, plotting and scheming against the cause of Christ. That's who we are. Which, which, cause, which probably causes you to think, you know, okay, who is this guy? And if he thinks that all these people are heretics and on their way to hell, um, who does he, who do, who is he and who does he think is a good teacher? We're going to look at that as well. Here's his YouTube channel. He actually speaks up against uh, some of the same uh, forms of false Christianity as I do. Um, mega churches, um, Bethel music, the Pope, uh, then other things he wars against are kind of odd. He doesn't like the idea of pastors, and um, he doesn't like uh, patriotic Christians. He doesn't like Chris Roseboro. He doesn't like a lot of things, but what does he like? Let's look at some of his thumbnails. John MacArthur ex exposed a heretic. <laughs> this is probably why you've never heard of him. John MacArthur's a heretic. Uh, Todd Friel, exposed. Grace to you, exposed. John MacArthur, exposed. Paul Washer partners with Hillsong Speaker. Now, these the, some of these videos are really hard to follow because the way that he makes Paul Washer guilty is his uh, association via conference to another conference speaker to somebody who that conference speaker knows, and uh, Paul Washer once signed his Bible. So now he's a part, you know, I don't know if Paul Washer signs Bibles. He probably doesn't, but that's the idea of how Paul Washer becomes uh, guilty. Paul Washer par partners with the Pope-loving ecumenical. That's the one that was really hard to follow. Three Calvinist, or G3 Calvinist conmen. Uh, Justin Peters is a bad guy. Not, how many people think Justin Peters is a bad guy? Uh, John MacArthur caught in a lie. Pure lies. Ray Comfort and others. John MacArthur exposed as a hypocrite. Uh, more um, Justin Peters and Todd Friel's guilty. John MacArthur's uh, school unites with Hillsong partner. <laughs> Disqualified. You know, I those who know these men uh, that are pictured. This is the most recent video, eight hours and 26 minutes, the death of discernment. So who is Josh Chavez? Uh, what I was going to say is th those of you who, who know and follow John MacArthur and Vody and Justin and the, uh, the other men, Paul Washer, those of you who follow them don't even entertain for a minute the legitimacy of the charges against that, that Joshua Chavez posts against them. So what, what's going on here? And, and who is Joshua Chavez? And who does he, who does he promote? Who do, if he thinks that all those people that we appreciate so greatly are going to hell, who does he endorse? One of the reasons, one, his main argument towards the, all those people is associations. And, uh, they're not necessarily guilty of her 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 heretical teaching, but they have been seen with somebody who has been seen teaching heresy. Here's his website. Um, one of his most recent, Justin Peters and Protesta Protect Predators. Totally, totally false. Uh, for the record, um, this man here is a, was a great friend of mine. 
and um, he fell into sin and my heart is broken and I am very saddened by it, blown away by it. Um, so I do not defend uh, the charges that are against him. I, um, I don't defend what has come out about him, but I love him. And we will see, we will see that Joshua Chavez actually uh, is hypocritical himself and by his own standard would be on his way to hell as well if he applied the same standard that he does to everybody else in his life. Um, here's um, Chris Roseborough explaining what's wrong with Service Christi. We'll play a clip here of uh, Chris Roseborough talking about Joshua Chavez and this is probably why Joshua makes so many videos, including uh, Chris Roseborough's. Chris, Chris Roseborough addressed Joshua. Mm. Chris Roseborough says here in this Twitter exchange, Second John nine through thirteen does not require J Mac to decline. Did you did you notice here that he's just kind of jumped into the middle of a conversation? Yeah, what's the context there, service? Speaking it together for the gospel. Or should I call you Severus? Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. For those that don't know, Together for the Gospel hosts uh, many of the uh, the men that I, I just listed a moment ago. Matt Chandler, David Platt, John Piper, Mark Dever, etc. Mm. I said, if three men there openly support Rick Warren, Beth Moore, Francis Chan, Carl Lentz, etc., do you not see something wrong with that? All right, so note here the important words. If three men there openly support Rick Warren, Beth Moore, Francis Chan, Carl Lentz, do you not see something wrong with that? So note that John MacArthur speaking at a conference where somebody is there who supports Rick Warren somehow makes him now endorsing Rick Warren and Beth Moore's theology. We'll talk about this in a second in detail here. And that's the way that Joshua Chavez comes to his guilty verdicts on so many people. And on his eight and a half hour video, he applied the hypocritical, heretical label to all the men that, uh, because they associate with me in one way or form or another. Here's Service Christie's uh, website. And uh, you go to his homepage, and uh, there's that. And you can go to uh, recommended resources. Who, so who is he? One thing that I know for sure is he doesn't attend a local assembly. He does not. He's not a member of a local assembly. He's under no one's uh, authority. He's uh, not accountable to a local minister or elder, but he does endorse these two things. This book, but written by Philip Dodridge, Dodridge uh, who's passed away, um, and then he endorses this guy, Biblical Church. Who is uh, this guy, um, Breersford? Now, who is he? So you click on that, and it takes you to the website of a church in England. Okay. So who, who are they? Let's like, why is he endorsing this? He obviously doesn't go to church at this place. Uh, we find that it is a fellowship of 25 people. Joshua Chavez has found a church in, in England, one church in the entire. Sorry about that. One church in all of the world that he endorses. He can't attend it. He can't be under their umbrella of uh, accountability, but he's found a church in England with 25 members that he likes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, also, uh, it's interesting <coughs> that... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do any editing here. Sorry for the coughing. But um, they don't have a comprehensive doctrinal church statement because they haven't listed it online because they don't have one. <laughs> That's convenient. So Joshua endorses a church that has no comprehensive doctrinal uh, positional statement. Okay, that person... Uh, Burr's Ford, 
<clears throat> wrote a book. It's called Can Salvation Be Lost? And this person, um, Beers Ford, seems like a, a good Bible teacher. He believes that in uh, <clears throat> home churches are, are the way to go and that home churches should be run as close to uh, as the uh, <clears throat> New Testament church ran their church. He wants them to be just like that. However, his isn't because um, people didn't stand behind pulpits in the early church and they didn't have um, a teacher preacher as this gentleman is that, that preached every week. So um, this book is notable though, because if I wanted to apply Joshua's logic to his own endorsements, okay, Joshua endorses this guy, right? But Joshua says pastors are a bad thing. A hierarchy of pastors, a head pastor is not a, not a good thing. There are 25 members at that man's church. If you go to their YouTube channel, there are hundreds of uh, Bible teachings, all of them from one man. They, choose, they don't call him the head pastor, but there are 25 members, and he preaches every Sunday. He is the, the teach, teacher. It's just semantics um, and hyper hyper judgmental, uh, wanting to say, and that the way we do church today is, is not appropriate. Um, here's the gentleman right here. He's talking about his latest book. Okay. And what the, the connection I'm drawing here is bizarre. <laughs> here's the bizarre connection. And this is the way Joshua finds that John MacArthur is going to hell. Okay. John MacArthur holds to a particular position, but yet jo uh, John MacArthur uh, has said good things about somebody else who uh, actually disagrees with John MacArthur on a point. So now John MacArthur is a hypocrite, one of the worst hypocrites you could ever find, just like the Pharisees, totally hypocritical. He's a heretic and he's going to hell. That's the logic that Joshua applies to yours truly and all those men on the thumbnail. Okay. Now here's somebody that Joshua endorses. Now you will remember that um, my ministry partner, J.D. Haw, has become disqualified, right? And Joshua says, Joshua says that J.D. Haw is going to hell. He's a wolf. J.D. Haw's a wolf. J.D. Haw's a wolf. Oh, how does he know that J.D. Haw's a wolf? Well, because uh, he's fallen into sin and such, such grievous, horrible sin for so long he could have never been a pastor, or excuse me, a, a, uh, a Christian. And now he's a wolf, and we all know he's going to hell because he's fallen into sin. And even seemingly, maybe, I don't know for sure, I haven't spoken to him in quite some time, unrepentant sin. So now we know he's not a Christian, and he's going to hell. That's Joshua's position about J.D. Hall. But what is this gentleman who's endorsed by Joshua Chavez, what's his position on somebody like J.D. Hall? Includes any idea of believers being lost once they've been saved. So, yes, the, the, the answer to the question, can salvation be lost? The answer I put forward in the book is, no, it cannot be lost. But what I also do is that I then go on to, to, to demonstrate from, from Scripture, is obviously particularly from the New Testament, that, yes, genuine believers do fall away. Uh, genuine believers can and do get into serious, ongoing, unrepentant sin. And genuine believers can and do fall away. So, And by falling away, he does not mean lose their salvation. He doesn't mean that. He, mean, he, he clearly stated, as you heard, once you're saved, you're saved. And Christians sometimes fall into long-term unrepentant sin. <laughs> That's against what Joshua Chavez's position is. That is 100% against it. So if I was going to apply Joshua's logic, this man who he endorses says that somebody like J.D. Hall uh, is still a Christian. 
and that's wrong. And Joshua Chavez is the worst heretic, worse than Benny Hinn, which is an application that he's given to Justin Peters. Justin Peters is worse than Benny Hinn. So you see the folly. You see the folly in the way that Joshua applies his discernment. Very troublesome. The other man that um, Joshua endorses is Philip Doddridge. I could play the same game with Philip Doddridge. And uh, he wrote a book, The Rise and Progress of Religion of the Soul. And in, in the back of that book, it says the following that um let's go to the let's go to the next page uh this is the uh end of the book where it's talking about who the man was and uh he says at 20 he became a the god he be uh began preaching the gospel and at 21 he was settled over a small congregation. Joshua Chavez believes that there's a plurality of elders and there's no hierarchy. And if you have a hierarchy of elders and you have a lead pastor, then that's a heretical church. And that's something that he has applied to John MacArthur and others. But yet here's Joshua Chavez endorsing this book which by all accounts is a fine book, but the man who wrote it was a lead elder in a small congregation. Boy, what I'm trying to demonstrate is if you apply Joshua Chavez's methods of discernment, there are no Christians. <laughs> We're all going to hell, every single one of us. It's not funny. Um, we once thought that Joshua was going away. Here's one of the reasons why Joshua just really is super pleased that J.D. Hall is not on the scene anymore it's because J.D. Hall and some others found out that Joshua got married. Here's his wedding picture. And for quite some time, Joshua went away from making videos because of this instance. Um, I don't know if he was embarrassed or didn't want to face it, but he's never, he's never mentioned this publicly. This is a tweet by, um, Chris Roseborough, which is probably why Joshua Chavez keeps making videos attacking him. Uh, recently, one of Joshua Chavez's wedding day photos made its way onto social media. The couple looks very happy. His pride bride was glowing in her dress and bouquet were beautiful. One has to wonder why it is taking so long for Chavez to address the very serious question that we ha that has been raised about his quote unquote marriage and subsequent and abrupt divorce. I don't know what happened. Um, perhaps Joshua can clear it up for us, but when we talk about ministry and being disqualified for ministry, some questions. Uh, come up now joshua used to be partners with this man J jacob prash jacob prash from what i've heard he's a heretic he's kind of loony and you'll see that in this video but jacob pratch um <laughs> has been anathematized by joshua chavez it used to be the only person that joshua would partner with and now he has joshua has exposed him but before he exposed him, uh, Jacob came to Joshua's defense and made a really weird video. Now, let me tell you before I play this video that uh, Jacob's reference to Joshua being called Lydia is because someone thought, made the claim, perhaps it's true, I don't know, that Joshua was commenting on a link with a... Uh, fake account under the name of Lydia. Okay. So this is just a couple of minutes long and it'll give you an idea of who a Jacob is and his relationship to Joshua and what uh, Jacob hopes for Joshua.
there's the issue of Joshua Chavez. Joshua Chavez is not a member of our Moriel team, and I'm not his boss. He does what the Lord leads him to do. He's not accountable to me. He's somebody I love. He's someone I like. He's someone I agree with most of the time. But I'm not his boss. He's not my employee, and we don't have any cult for him to be a member of. I go to an ordinary church, and I'm ordained by an ordinary movement of conservative evangelicals. No, it's not what you said, but you keep referring to him as Lydia. Lydia. That's effeminate. Lydia is a girl's name. Why are you calling him Lydia, a young guy who made one mistake? If I knew a young guy named Joshua who made a mistake, who might have really been a Lydia, I would get next to him and be a father to him. Because if somebody had been a proper father to him, maybe he would not have made that mistake. We all live in a pink submarine, a pink submarine, a pink submarine. No, I don't think Joshua is Lydia. I think he's a young guy who made a mistake. He doesn't need an accuser. He already has one of those. What he needs is a father. So Jacob thinks that Joshua has daddy issues, I guess. What the song was about, I don't know. But that's weird stuff. And that, I believe... The mistake I could I could be wrong. The mistake he's referring to could be um, the marriage that happened and then was annulled after it was consummated in someone's living room. It wasn't consummated in the living room, I don't think, but it, it the ceremony happened in a living room. Back to the next slide. All right, what well, this this thing here. Um, what was I going to say about that? slide oh the re the reason why this video eight and a half minutes long eight and a half minutes long excuse me eight and a half hours long all right we're all sad and heartbroken with uh the revelations uh from about jd hall but the death of discernment comes when um todd Friel, phil johnson justin peters and chris roseborough they all partner with this guy, this guy here. That's me, right? And they're, they are all discredited and evil men because five years ago, they did a conference with me. I invited them. I was a co-sponsor of a conference called Judge Not. And it, uh, actually, Todd Friel was supposed to be at the conference. He didn't make it. And so was Chris Roseboro. We piped him in over the internet he didn't make it but uh other men did along with justin peters and phil johnson but uh because todd Friel has been on my podcast and affirmed that i have a podcast as a christian uh, that makes him uh an evil man and a hypocrite uh, phil johnson was at the judge not conference and he's been at he's been on btwn at, interviewed not in the last two or three years but in the past, Justin Peters, um, he's been on the podcast and he was at the conference and of course, Ro Chris Roseborough has been on the podcast. So all these men are bad. You know why? Because 20 years ago, I became disqualified, um, for ministry, for pastoral ministry 20 years ago. And, and I've never hidden that from my audience. I, I've written articles about it. I've talked about it. I've shared my testimony. And um, Joshua Chavez wants to wants to take my clip of me saying that I'm completely disqualified from pastoral ministry and say, Tim, you're a hypocrite. You have a YouTube ministry. Somebody who becomes disqualified for the pastoral ministry or someone who's not qualified for the pastoral ministry does that mean that they cannot minister in any way? That would be a question that I have for Joshua because I believe the Lord has something for people 
other than pastoral ministry. And uh, I just thank the Lord for what he's done uh, with me. Um, and I can't, I can't um, say that enough, but we're all going to hell. <laughs> that, that's something that's very clear is that from Joshua is that we are all going to hell. Um, I wanted to share with you that article. There it is. Here's the article. And um, I share this because, and the link is in the description. Um, I'll just let you go through it. I don't want to, I don't want to just, just, just like, I don't want to bring up the worst of the worst about JD Hall. I don't want to bring up, talk about the worst of the worst of service Christie. So the man is an Island. He answers to no one. His only ministry partner has left him. The whole marriage thing happened um, within the last two years, I believe. And uh, you can go through that article. He uh, he brought a woman from another country into the into the state and uh, married her, consummated the marriage. And for whatever reason, I've actually had interactions with the woman who he married and is longing to be reunited with him but he refuses and actually because she was from another country and didn't get married, she had to leave the United States. So she's back in the country where she came from. Very sad, sad situation. Um, we have an angry person, somebody, you know what, you know, what's the, the weird thing is, is that Joshua, if he just preaches the gospel, he knows the gospel. And each of these men preach the same gospel as Joshua does. Salvation by faith alone, through Christ alone. Repent and believe. Um, eternal salvation for those who are, are truly in Christ. He, he preaches the same thing. But he doesn't like the, the methodology of these, these men. He doesn't like um, the associations that they have. I don't like the associations that some of them have, but, um, I'm not them. And I've, I've spoken out against it. Um, now in his eight and a half hour video, the discernment one where he, um, said that, um, all these men are in partnership with me. And it is true that J.D. Hall was in partner in ministry with me. Um, but it's not true that these other four men were in partnering with ministry with me. I uh, met Todd Friel at the G3 conference in 2016, 17. It was the second G3 conference. Um, I met him. I talked to him. I interviewed him a couple times on my podcast. And although I like the guy a lot and he has had a tremendous impact in my life, <laughs> we don't talk. We don't. I, I used to have his phone number. I don't anymore. Um, Phil Johnson, although this YouTube channel uh, would uh, seem to imply that Phil Johnson and I are best buddies, um, we're, I, I okay. <clears throat> last time I saw Phil, uh, he, he and I agreed that he was going to come on the podcast and, uh, we were going to continue with the judge, not conference questions that people had given in, but I never followed up. I never called him back. I still do have his phone number, but I haven't contacted him since the judge, not conference. I do, do not think I have Justin Peters. I have, I have his phone number. I called him last week, which was the first time in quite a while when Justin Peters and I talk, it's usually because he disagrees with something that I said and uh, something that I said about him and he wants clarification. And sometimes I, I talk about it on video, but 
he's Justin Peters ministries and BTWN are not tight. Although I call him my friend, I call Phil Johnson, my friend, because the last time that I saw him and talked to him, we were friendly. <laughs> That's my definition of a friend. Uh, I call Todd Friel, my friend, because we've always been friendly every single time we talk or whatever. Uh, Chris Roseboro, I call him a friend because he's been on the podcast a few times and he says he'll come on again. And, um, we've always been friendly, but I don't think we have talked in over a year. I think I have his phone number. See, this is a shortcoming of BTWN is that I don't follow through with my relationships, uh, with men. Uh, I don't do good, um, partnering, uh, because I, I just don't get around to it. It's not that I don't get along with people. It's that I'm not good at follow-up. I could have better relationships with these men if I would keep in contact with them and uh, seek to include them in stuff that I do, but I don't. Um, I'm not good at that. Um, Paul Washer son is way to hell. Unbelievable. Fody Balcom. Uh, leave your comments below. I'm sorry that this has been rambling. It's just, there's a lot of information and I've been opening tabs for the last day and uh, hats off to Joshua Chavez who can make an, an eight and a half hour video uh, and it be uh, chronological and organized in some way. I don't have the time to do that. I don't even have time to edit this video. Um, I got, I have things to do. And, um, if you appreciated this, leave your comment, like it, share it, uh, at least share it when this guy's, uh, when this guy's, um, going after people, it'll shed some light on what's going on. Hmm. Have a good weekend. It's Labor Day weekend. And I hope that uh, no matter who you are, what you're doing, even Joshua, my prayer is that God would bless you. And until next video, I'll see you.